In this video, we're going to learn about how a magnifying glass works. In order to understand the physics behind a magnifying glass, we need to learn first what type of lens a magnifying glass is made up of. Then we're going to learn the thin lens equation. And then finally, we'll use the thin lens equation to demonstrate mathematically that magnifying glasses make objects appear larger. So first of all, a magnifying glass is called a converging lens, and this is a lens that's rounded outwards on both sides. When the light rays pass through the lens, they're going to bend and converge at the focal point, which is this point right here. Now these red lines are just representing these uh, rays of light that are coming into the lens, and then each of these rays of light will just come right down into that focal point, just like this. And so we get this really concentrated bit of light there. This is the same kind of idea as when in the summertime you may have taken a magnifying glass and shone uh, sunlight through it and you're able to actually burn things because the beam of light gets so intense as all those rays of light converge into that one single spot. So the thin lens equation is an equation that's used to determine the location and size of an image that's produced with a lens. So this symbol right here represents the object distance, that is how far the object is from the lens. This is the image distance, and then this is called the focal length, which is how far away the focal point is from the lens. Now the second part of the equation, these kind of work together, these two equations, this deals with how big the image will be. And then this is the image height and the object height, and this would give us the magnification. Now, I wrote this down as the mirror equation. This is exactly what the mirror equation looks like, um, if you watch the video on mirror equation. We have to make a couple changes, though, with the thin lens equation. And if you remember for the mirror equation, if you watch that video, we have this negative sign here that will help us determine if the image will be upright or inverted and which side of the mirror it's going to be on. Now that we're going to change this to a positive sign and I'll show you why we'll do that as we look at this lens right here. First off we're going to call this side of the lens the front and so the front is the side where light is going to kind of originate or where it starts and then we'll call this side over here the back and that's where light is going to eventually end up. Now light is going to be on both sides of the lens. So light will start here and it'll travel over to this side. Now when we were dealing with mirrors, light would only be in the front and so the light would hit the mirror and bounce back and so light would never get over here. We call this side of a uh, mirror the virtual side and it's the side where light actually doesn't get to. Now we still want to think with lenses, we want to think about real and virtual images and a real image means it can be projected onto a screen of some sort and so I can essentially hold a piece of paper in front of this lens right here and the light could kind of project onto that piece of paper. Over here, if I was holding the piece of paper on this side, I wouldn't get an image to form because all the light is passing through and so this side over here we'd have virtual images so that we could see them with our eye but we couldn't project them onto a screen. So when these light rays pass through the lens are going to bend and I've drawn three lines whenever we're trying to find an image this is our object our image is going to produce somewhere over here with this particular object we draw one line that's going to be parallel to this principal axis this is the center line right here that cuts through the middle we're going to draw run one line that passes right through the center of the lens and then we'll draw one line that passes through the focal point so we always start with these three lines now the line that went parallel it's going to travel on the other side through the focal point. The line that went through the center is just going to keep on going straight. And then the line that passed through the focal point originally, it's going to travel parallel, just like that. And the point that they all converge right there, that's going to be the top of our image. And I'm going to end up with something like that. So there is the image that is going to be produced. Now once we start doing the math part of this, we really want to be careful with uh, which side of the lens we're on. And so I have an object here and an image here. And let's just say that they're equal distance from the lens. So we'll say that they're 10 centimeters each. Now since they're on opposite sides, I need to distinguish somehow that this one's on the left side and this one's on the right side. So what we do to decide which side it's on is we call one side positive and one side negative. Now depending on the physics textbook and depending on the teacher, 
um, they're going to choose one of these sides as positive, the other is negative, or vice versa. What I like to do is call the left side negative and the right side positive. And so that's going to make my 10 on this side a negative value. The reason I'm going to do that is because then if I get a positive value for my answer for the distance of the image, I know that it's going to be a real image. If I get a negative answer, that means the image is on this side and it's going to be a virtual image. This also makes things easy for us because the object distance will always be negative. So here's the change we're going to make to our equations. All I have to do is just put a negative sign right there and I'm going to change this negative sign to a positive and there's my thin lens equation. So the only difference between this uh, these equations and the mirror equation is just we change these signs right here. So this is our thin lens equation. Negative sign there and positive sign there. Let's try using this uh, to, to demonstrate that magnifying glasses make objects larger. So here's a problem that says a magnifying glass has a focal length of 10 centimeters. If an object is 1.5 centimeters tall and is placed 15 centimeters from the lens, how large will its image be? So here's our mirror equation and here's the two parts. We're going to need both of these parts. First of all, we're going to use this half of the mirror equation and we're going to solve for the distance of the image. And then we'll use this half and solve for the height of the image. So when it's saying how large, we're trying to find this value right here. Now this is just a little drawing of what this would look like. Here's the focal length of 10 centimeters and the object would be right here at two, uh, 15 centimeters. And I could demonstrate where this object is visually by drawing in those three different lines here, just like that. And then the parallel line will pass through the focal point. This one will just keep going straight. And then this line will go parallel. And we should see it somewhere over there, should be upside down. And looks like it's going to be a little bit smaller. So let's start with uh, the image distance here and solve for this. I'm going to rearrange this equation by uh, adding 1 over do. That's going to move it over to this side. So I can go ahead and plug in my numbers. The focal length is 10 centimeters and the object distance is 15 centimeters. But remember this side is going to be the negative side and this side is the positive side. So this is actually negative 15 centimeters. And so plugging everything in I get this. So it's really 1 over 10 minus 1 over 15. And I'm going to end up with a distance for the image of 30 centimeters. And so that means the image is going to be over on this side, right? Because this is the positive side, so we got a positive value there. Now I can go ahead and plug things into uh, this part of the equation. So I've rearranged this equation to solve for the height of the image by moving the HO up to this side over here. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug everything in. So I've plugged everything in, being really careful of my signs. I had to remember that the object distance is negative because it's over here on the negative side of things. And so when I plug it all in, I'm going to end up with negative 3 centimeters. And so that means it's going to be upside down or inverted. That's what that negative sign means, and that's what we're showing here. And so that is the height of the image. Now this image would look really weird. It'd be upside down. And this is not at all what we'd expect a magnifying glass to do. If you notice that this object was uh, in front of the focal point here. So let's do another problem here. We'll just one a bit quicker. In this case, we've moved the object between the lens and the focal point. And this is normally how we would use a magnifying glass. You'd be over here looking through this magnifying glass at this object that you would have the glass fairly close to the object. So here's the equations I'm going to use, the two parts of the mirror equation. I've already rearranged them to solve for the distance of the image and the height of the image. This problem says a magnifying glass has a focal length of 10 centimeters, and it says an object is 1.5 centimeters tall and placed 8 centimeters from the lens. And again, how large will the image be? Let's go ahead and plug in our information into the first equation here, remembering to keep that object distance as a negative. And in this case, I'm going to get a image distance of negative 40 centimeters. So that means 
the uh, image that's produced is going to be somewhere over here on the negative side of the lens. Let's go ahead and plug this information into this other equation here and solve for the height of the image. And we'll go ahead and plug everything into our calculator. We have these two negative signs, and so this is going to become a positive answer in the end. And we're going to end up with a image height of 7.5 centimeters, and that's going to be a positive. So that means it's upright, and it's going to be quite a bit bigger, and so our image would be something like this. So as we're looking through this magnifying glass at this object, we would, we would see this big large image and that's how a magnifying glass works. You want to have the object in between the focal point and the lens itself. So that is how a magnifying glass works.